Yeah. All right, we're just rigging up for a mission. We've got the boys here, got the invite from Johan. Yeah. Um, just rigging up the boat, and then we're going to get out to the outer sound, so we'll see you out there. Yeah, Jake's uh, got onto it. He's made some of his own. Flash, flash bombs, flash grenades. Mean. Lucky I'd hear them. What is it? Barkwood. I think so. Barkwood. <laughs> Handmade barkwood. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will come in and be like, there's no such thing as barkwood. <laughs> <laughs> First things first, we hopped in the water and just decided to warm up the lungs. I actually shot a blue mocky on like the first or second dive and then Mitch here found a patch of cray so I was just assisting him um, going into a hole by himself. Just a good thing to do, dive in his buddy pairs, um, watch over your buddy. He managed to spot a few crays there so I followed him down to try and get on camera and again assist him with going into that hole just in case he needed a bit of help. On the descent down, a nice school of blue mocky came in. This one came quite close. I didn't want to shoot one straight away just because I wanted to have my full concentration on my dive buddy. So I just kept an eye on them in the corner and just waited for him to come out with or without the crayfish before I made the next move. Out he comes with a nice cray, so I decided to spin around and take the biggest mocky from the school. Close one. So that was me on the board with two blue mocky straight away. It's good to sort of relieve that pressure from gathering a feed um, early on. So you can just relax a bit more, I guess. Obviously there was some crazy in the vicinity, so I decided to snoop around looking under boulders, looking under cracks, and um, just sifting through the weed. It's quite dense here, so making sure I get underneath it rather than just scouting over the top because most of the cracks were hidden by this weed and managed to move this blade of a colonia out of the way and get my hands on the crayfish straight away. Cray number one, done and dusted. I love these cray nooses here because it just has way less drag than a uh, catch bag does. So it's way less effort to tow it through the water and it's super secure. Um, I've never lost a crayfish on these nooses, touch wood, and um, it just makes it so much easier. Less stuff to carry, way more compact, way lighter, and takes up less room in your dive bag. When there's craze, there's usually more. So I decided to keep looking around and unfortunately I missed that one. But looked over in the opposite crack and saw another one deep in there, managed to get my hand on him.
GoPro number two for the table. Doing pretty well so far. We've probably been in the water for about 40 minutes maybe and um, certainly not struggling to get a feed. Um, super productive area out in the outer sounds. I did however notice that I had a bit of a bend in my spear. Um, not sure when it happened. It was probably in the transit over. There was only a couple of cars with a whole bunch of spearos and gear piled in and potentially got um, a bit damaged in transit but managed to straighten it out good enough to carry on for the day and I just decided I'd give it a bit more attention once I got home but that was good enough. Every time I came out of a cray hole there seemed to be a few butterfish kicking around so I decided not to waste a good opportunity and get a few butterfish in the bag. see here there was a couple of really good sized butterfish hanging around and I didn't really feel like taking any of those ones so I just let them swim off and waited for something that was slightly smaller. Locked eyes on a good target and pulled the trigger. A couple of butters in the bag now pretty happy with that um, starting to get a good tally on the board so I decided to just explore some more ground and stumbled across another good patch of crayfish. Super dark in the back of these caves here. Ideally I would have had a torch but then again um, my experience with the torch quite often you can actually scare the crayfish deeper into the hole. They've got really sensitive eyes and they're not used to a hell of a lot of light so one it's not that great for the crayfish especially if you're not going to take them but two I reckon it makes it harder so that's uh, cray number four going on the noose and um, getting pretty happy with how it's, everything's looking. Had a bit of trouble getting this guy on just because, oh, crayfish, man, they just grab hold of anything. So had a bit of a tussle with him but managed to get him on there in the end. Crayfish number four. How you getting on? Hey? Eh? You've been having good luck with the crayfish. <laughs> it's pretty around. I just left a massive one down here. Yeah, everywhere man, everywhere. <laughs> I haven't moved along at all. We're a couple. How are you guys getting on? Yeah, a couple of blue mokey, yep. a couple of craze, yep. a couple of parlor. Oh cool. A parlor yeah, six too. butters or something. Yeah. I don't see any butters. No. More current. Yeah, it's it's really more current. Really I'd load my current. little, little butt. Yeah. Got yeah. yeah. some parlors actually, which is nice. Oh yeah, good ones or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got one, probably 150. Just over there. Yeah, the same where I'm washing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of real big mokey that I actually had one come up and I said, oh mate. I've already shot two, I'm, I'm good on the mokey. I know, it's funny, eh? Yeah. You feel like they're so tame. Yeah. But... I might try to go get some powers though. Yeah, I might, um, I'll come, I'll just unload it to the chili. Yeah, come sweet. On. Yeah. Heaps of patches of craze around here. I might try to grab this one, then I might go looking for some power. Managed to get my hands on another cray but this one put up a bit of a tussle and proved quite hard to get out of the hole so unfortunately lost a few legs in the process but um, still a good crayfish nonetheless and another one going on the noose. It's awesome to see such a productive area. Obviously the outer sounds it's quite a way away from civilization so it's just good to be able to dive these areas every now and then. Obviously with small boats they're usually a bit out of reach do it on the right day, but um, it's quite hard to get the right day. It's 
spotted another big buck underneath this crack so I went for the grab and realized there was a whole bunch of other crays in there so went for a grab and another one and managed to get two in one breath pretty stoked with that it's not every day you get to do that so um, it's good had a good little giggle it was a good achievement and um, that's my limited crayfish done for the day Because there were so many of us on board and there was a whole range of experienced to non-experienced divers, um, I did decide to take six today just so I could share it around with some other people and it um, means that the, the less experienced divers still got to come away with a feed as well as being involved and learning some tips, tricks and techniques from the more seasoned divers on the boat. Whew. Go and offload some fish. Boss or the missus? The missus. <laughs> yeah. I am the, Pretty healthy well, looking man. Like I'm the boss at home. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say. <laughs> Alright. Trying to go get some power, I reckon. Got enough fish. Be back soon. Jumped in to have a look quickly grab some powers and it didn't take long before I got into a good patch so I just started knocking off the biggest ones I could find off the rocks the one downside to using a cray noose instead of a catch bag is that there's nowhere to store your power so I was just chucking these under my wetsuit top it's not like you're getting a whole bunch and I managed to just make do swim back to the boat and offload power were pretty easy to get around here because there were so many of us on board and there was only one chili bin once the catch got into the tr chili bin the responsibility of size limits kind of got dissolved so we made the call pretty early on to measure once in the water once we're harvesting but also once we get back on the boat to double measure before anything got into the bin that way we knew that everything in there was of a legal size and we we're abiding by all the rules We've um, pretty much finished our harvesting for the day. Um, I think we're just waiting on maybe one or two people to get one more crayfish just to satisfy their hunting requirements. But the bins are full, so I don't know what the plan is. Head back. Whaling station. Whaling station. Whaling station. Whaling station. Oh, yeah. Sweet. That sounds like a plan. See the North Island, actually. It's cleared up. Oh, yeah. Oh, just yeah. behind over there. That boat looks heavy. Yeah. <laughs> He's been slaying. <laughs> what have you got in there? See that's why right. <coughs> when you can hold your breath for five minutes, my ears pick up yeah. six <laughs> <laughs> Crazy to touch. That's why I feel the giant wet walk. It's, it's bigger than him. <laughs> Waiting for you to open it up so that we can see what's inside. That looks bloody small. What's in that power, bro? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I took my yellow. Oh, you took a yellow? Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah, sure. Look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was that yellow. It's about five metres, but it probably wasn't. Easy. Yeah, maybe five to five metres, and you completely disappeared under the yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what? 
Great whites, bronzies, seven gillers. Everything would have been feasting in here, right? Eh? Oh, that one's open, so I think we're allowed in. Make sure I don't fall in. Oh, it's clear as in here. Yeah, they were lifted some whales in its time, eh? And the amount of whales that would have been butchered here, man. What's that then? Is that a vat for storing the fat? Maybe. Must be. It's a shame you're not allowed up it. For safety reasons, please keep to the viewing platform. For now, they've stopped people getting in. Hard to imagine this place in full swing. Oh, check it out, feeding the bone digester. Holy shit. Internal, feeding internal organs into the caverna. That's, that's just like what a, a feral job, man. Oh, that that's like a, um, just like a boil, like boil Just boil it, it you boil it down. So that was the first of the process. Big, um, thing yeah, the bone, blubber and internal organs were fed into the caverna digester through two large doors. Well, it's capable of slippery blood and guts on the floor. Factory workers had to work around the various wires leading the winches. Holy oh, shit. Yeah, Dead whales are floating there. 1924, that was the early days. 600 tons each of those of, of oil. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, that's, that's probably one. Oh, we need to go for all that shit. You know, it's been a good day when you need a trolley to get the chili bin off the boat. <laughs> On your boys. All right, guys, that's enough for this video. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and um, stay tuned for more adventures. I'm actually out recording another video at the moment, so hopefully you guys will get to see this one soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time.